Daar je hoor. En een big applaus voor Piet van Rielen, uh, manager e-commerce en nieuw business. Bij uh, Ambo Antos, hartelijk welkom. Uh, and we continue in English, if it's okay to you. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for Jacob. It's very okay for me. <laughs> yeah, it's very okay for you. Eh? Yeah, either Danish, but that's, yeah, not, yeah, my, uh, that's not my language. Um, first reaction, Pete. Uh, you heard uh, the story of Jacob. What do you think? I totally recognize it. It's the same story here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. With um, testing, testing. Um, not enough capacity for f the, the audio is uh, is moving the same way like ebooks 10 years ago mm -hmm. um, the developments but it's going much faster mm -hmm. it's uh, we we got same um, the same streaming services over here storytel uh, kobo but also podimo is trying to get here uh, bookmate mm -hmm. we got um, we're looking for new partnerships because you don't want to be focused on just one. Um, and we have the difficulty of explaining revenue share, mm -hmm. of course, yeah. to agents and authors. New business models. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, what are you doing uh, in, in reflection to the story of uh, uh, that we heard on stage? Uh, what is Ambo Antos at this moment doing, c uh, concrete? What are, what are the projects running? What are the... Um, I think we started five years ago, we started publishing our own audiobooks. Yeah. Um, before that, they were sub-licensed to uh, a company like Rubenstein, and uh, they made CDs, very nice, but they were sold in bookstores. Mm -hmm. And since since the introduction of Storytel and streaming services, um, we decided, well, we need to get uh, more in contact with the readers. Yeah. And, uh, and and so we developed our own audiobooks. And, and the same difficulty, budgets. How much do we spend on, e on audiobooks? Because you you're looking at two and a half to four thousand uh, euros of production cost per title on an old book, which yeah two thousand to four thousand yeah it depends on 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 the volume. But that th then th is it that possible to build a business case upon? If I look at the market of say in the how many people yes. live in the Denmark? Five million. Five million. Well, hey, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've yeah. got we've got fifteen, sixteen. Say, I don't know. Yeah. Well, but you need to know. We don't have fifteen million users yet. So. No, not yet. But two to four thousand isn't that big. It is per title, and if you have a backlist title, so uh, it, it's it's a discussion we we had, but we don't have any more. That's what I'm saying. It's it's going that fast. Um, I don't need to worry about budgets, uh, production budgets. But now we have the story of uh, voices that are not available, <laughs> studios that are cramped. Really? Really, yeah, yeah. And speak themselves in, so you do... No, wh no, I don't say, because then you get this guy. You know what I mean, eh? So <laughs> <my English accent>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Your English is just as good as mine. No, yeah. that's why yeah. we don't yeah, do you it. You speak them in yourself. No, we uh, don't no. do that. No, but the, but the, what, I, what I try to... What I, try to uh, I, w I want to hear it from you guys. Is if I listen to your stories, b but maybe that's my entrepreneurial uh, out of... The, you know, I don't work in your industry, but I, I the only thing I see... Yes. You no know, new new products, new formats, new concepts, new markets, innovate it's bang. And then I hear two to four thousand yes. for a book at oh, peanuts. So I think, yeah, go, go, go. what's the problem? Because there's a little bit of voice like mm, mm, mm. we are we're going. It's you know, and we're building our own um, our own studios now. And uh, okay. now so we're newspapers talking. they have their podcast studios, but we also want our our studios. You know, we want uh, studios for one person just uh, uh, reading uh, the reading, book? And, and, yeah. and we also need two person studios. And interview we, you know, kind we, of we need a lot of studios ah. now, and um, uh, we need a lot of things in house now. And I think we. Um, we started out by, you know, calculating a lot, and yeah. don't. don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> it is, it's, uh, it's, it's an investment in the future, and you need to go there. Yeah. And uh, if you're just a, a mid-size or a big uh, publishing house, go and do it. It's, uh, okay. it's, it's now. How important is cooperation between comp? Do, do you? B is this the first time you meet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. Because we didn't meet. We did. Ah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I, I met with um, one of your f friends yesterday, some from uh, Bruna, and I, you know, I've had talks with Bruna for a lot of years, and it's. I think it's, you know, good to have these conversations, and uh, we're not uh, directly competitors, so mm -hmm. we can we can uh, elaborate about what is what is going on in your country, yeah. and, and it's also, you know, um, what is happening. Storytelling is coming to Holland, okay? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I can. What are your experiences? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's uh, exactly it's also you know, to experience. talk about it in a in a you know. Uh, relaxed way. It's, it's not. Uh, it's not. It's, it's not dangerous anymore. You know. It's. Uh, it's, oh. it's just going to be there, and you have to to go find your way uh, through. And 
Do you have ro like uh, uh, role models or, or examples that you say, oh, that that publishing company is doing uh, good stuff, or the is, uh, do you have examples? Um, well, I, I've heard about Polyptkin, but I also heard from uh, from from uh, Kobo that, that they have partners uh, they they talk with, and they say, well, you should look at that, that publishing house, and they're doing uh, digital only. Mm -hmm. So we started our digital only, I think, two and a half years ago. So we do ebook and audiobook only because it. Uh, we saw that audio was was booming, and uh, but we had to convince some authors, or we had to convince uh, an agent. So well, then we make our own content, mm -hmm. uh, which is more suitable for this for certain uh, of types of uh, streaming services. And not all our titles are suitable for audio. No, you which are diffi difficult nonfiction, upmarket nonfiction, yeah, yeah, yeah. upmarket fiction uh, literature is not doing that well yet. Mm -hmm. But now we're starting to uh, to produce. Uh, Personal ontwikkeling, uh, self development. Personal development, yeah. Person and and um, we see that. And th that's it work works very well. Yeah, that's uh, what we hear yeah, from yeah. Storytel. Yeah. They say, well, you should look at in into this because we made one title and it's going like yeah. this. We, we just hired a, a digital sales manager this summer uh, and she came back to us from uh, Storytel. Um, I like to say that she was an intern at, uh, at, at Storytel for a couple of years and then she came back. No, but uh, she was at our publishing house two years ago and now she's back and with a lot of knowledge. And and it's, uh, I think, you know, they, they know what, what's, yeah. what's going on and they know what is, uh, what is uh, a success. And it's, uh, it's, n it's nice to have this knowledge in-house. In How do you make sure that you stay, um, in the, I wouldn't say in the lead, but up front? Because if we, if we do the metaphor to the record industry, like this morning, René Witzel uh, told us, that if you th there are, uh, what you see in a lot of industries is that there are, uh, that there are a couple of big parties that <coughs> rule, you know? Uh, if you're looking at the audio industry, we also see that slightly happen. How do you, as a publisher, uh, what's your role in the future landscape? Um, before you get overruled by, by one or two really big companies with a lot of money, be open to uh, conversation to, to to cooperate with with new parties uh, like uh, like Mofibo or, or uh, Bookbeat, uh, mm -hmm. um, and develop your own content uh, for perhaps your own sales channel. We we don't have uh, our own uh, app yet, streaming service, but we sell directly. But uh, I think yeah, you, you need to, to be open to opportunities. Uh. Yeah. What's the business model of the future for you? Um, I think I'm, you know, I'm very concerned about revenue share as everybody else, and yeah. it's it's been a uh, very big issue for us. And uh, also, agents in the US they don't want to sell anything and pool based, and uh, so it's it, it's a big thing. And I I hope that we can find you know a, a solution where you can you know get pay for what you actually made and uh, uh, it might not be as it was but uh, a lot of services they now um, use the term uh, royalty time so you get paid for each, each uh, hour that you, the listener is you know royalty it, time, royalty each, time. Mi each minute yeah, yeah and uh, you know it's not f totally fair because it's not it has nothing to do with the you know uh, this specific book, but oh. it has something to do about how long time are you consuming uh, some of your products. So, so if I listen fast and I put it on like t t two yeah. times the it speed, it you earn less. No, it's oh. uh, gladly. It's, uh, yeah. it's oh, that's like that's that. all taken care of. Okay. You also need to make uh, uh, to make sure that if you have short content, then you get like children's books. That's another part of uh, listening than than uh, a complete book of four hundred pages. So you make different uh, uh, afspraken. <laughs> agreements, <laughs> agreements, agreements, agreements on that. What about real innovation? If you, I last week I saw an example of a, uh, an AI generated uh, voice uh, that also had emotion. Mm -hmm. So in this, this case it was a she, but she could become angry or you know excited or sad. Uh, how far is that? Because then we we there's a solution for the production thing. If if we have an artificial voice, uh, how far away is that? Um, we have a five-year strategy at Politiken, and yeah. uh, this is something that we are talking about. And it's not going to uh, do anything to us in the next couple of years, but we need to talk about this. You know, we need to talk about AI when it's uh, about speech. We need to talk about it when it's translation, yeah. and uh, we need to talk about it uh, in metadata. But also for for your novels, for your for your fiction. Um, you know, uh, that will not be the first thing. No. No. 
but I cannot say that it's not going to happen. No, no. Uh, so uh, I've heard some examples in English that uh, you know you have this uh, um, very well-known uh, voice. You know they're just adapting uh, his yeah. voice. They are Speaking listening. That voice. <laughs> that voice, and you cannot hear no. the difference. You know yeah. it's the English language is you know they are very long. Yeah. So and the Dan uh, one of our newspapers they are using it for all the art articles. So you can uh, all of them can be um, which are neutral because it's a journalist. For nonfiction, yeah. it would work, but if yeah. uh, b because we had a lot of dis discussions yeah. about yeah. Uh, which voice to use yeah. and do you yeah. use the author's voice or yeah. do you use a. I think I think the, pr the problem is that uh, the technology is Google and Amazon, yeah. so and and you know they will own it all <laughs> yep. by the end of the day, and it's that's the problem that uh, everybody is using their technology to do AI. By for but don't you think there will be uh, some kind of an open source solution uh, where you um, can? There might be. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Who will own? Because that's what you, I think, you want is to know who the readers are or listeners or the clients, customers, whatever. Uh, what they do when they do it. Blah, blah, blah. Um, who, who, do you own that already right now? How's that? How? Do, what do you know at this moment? Of we get a lot of insights from our partners, from mm. from like Storytel or Kobo. Um, they get they have this they have these dashboards where you can see which title is uh, performing uh, what day of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, how many times it's been listened, of course, if it's finished, yeah. finishing rates. Um, so that, that helps us a bit about uh, cho uh, choosing the right collection yeah. for, for production uh, available titles. Um, how many Kobos are there out there? Because the Kobos are, in fact, um, later on maybe Kobo will uh, say something yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kobo is one of the play because yeah. you had already eight uh, yeah. sort of... Uh, the, uh, is that the new retail? I think so. So to speak, if you compare it with the book industry? Yeah, and uh, what's the uh, what's the uh, earn what's the business model between those parties, or can't you be honest about that? Mm -hmm. Because I was always very surprised about the business model of the classic. I, th I think we were all scared, you know, 15 years ago when uh, Amazon introduced the Kindle, and uh, yeah. there were no money left in the business. <laughs> but we learned to live with it. It's you know, it's it's it, it it cha uh, the change in the the business is okay. It's hard for some publishers, and it's you know good for others. And uh, when you talk to an old uh, author, uh, he's very sad about the the situation right now but then you have a totally new author writing a crime novel being able to reach 8,000 people you know within the first half year he's very happy being so willing to serializing yeah. his book and yeah adapted to it's writing a book every kind of year he knows the drill and it's yeah it's just different and will it always be a, a book as a basic I, I listened to somebody last week and he was he, he was a re, re, he liked religion not really like going to church, blah, blah, blah. But he has some kind of a Bible format, but not in the form of one book. But he get a, cr he get a little story each day. And each day there was like a thought or something that was very valuable for him. So a complete new way of listening to a complete new format. Do you see that happening? Yeah, I think so. Already uh, doing that? What you're saying it's testing. Well, we do uh, serialize more than we did. Uh -huh. um, we do uh, specials with certain partners uh, to try trial and error. Just uh, yeah. we develop uh, content in a different way. Yeah, yeah. And we do also. Yeah. Uh, we have um, younger people wanting something else, and yeah. uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's uh, sometimes you had an idea for a book and you didn't release it. Now you have an idea and you can test it. You can you, you can just send a chapter out and find out. Okay. There were no listeners. We're not going to make the book. Or you can <laughs> find out that there were 10,000 listeners, and then uh, you might make another chapter and another chapter because it works in audio. Perhaps it also works in, in print. And then you can you know, develop new products uh, through um, audio. Can I see North Audio Publishing as a startup? Uh, yeah. And What's uh, the reason yeah. why not implement it from the first day uh, in uh, the, the own organization? Um, actually, it is implemented in the organization right now, but it's supposed to be lifted out. Uh, because the knowledge is inside the publishing house right now, but it's uh, it's very difficult to have an uh, inter um, in, uh, an uh, innovation hub inside a traditional publishing house. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's good to to you know put it apart and uh, and see what it can do on its own. Yeah, y ID for you. We we have uh, a digital imprint called Loft, and and but it's implemented in Ambo Antos, mm -hmm. um, and I, I can recognize what you're saying that. Uh, it could help if we uh, take it outside the uh, organization, but then you don't have the level uh, people want. You want to have the back office. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. yeah. Um, One or two questions, then we go to the audience. 
Um, how's the cooperation with the media industry? Because it's audio, it's sometimes even maybe video coming into, you are building studios, so it sounds like the media industry. Are the publishing and the media industry, is that merging? Is there cooperation? Is there crossovers? How do you see that? Um, we've also already, uh, always done it because we are part of this media house. And yeah. uh, we released... Do television also and radio? No, not television. Not. Uh, but we made a book last year about... Um, 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 family from uh, Denmark uh, who uh, uh, adopted a, a child from Greenland. And uh, this was a, a true story. So beside the uh, fiction uh, book, uh, we also made a podcast, went to Greenland, interviewed some people, uh, made four chapters, and then we released it together with the newspaper. And then they had the story and they uh, decided. So we, we are using it, yeah. And yeah. We, uh, we try. Uh, what I really meant was also a, like audiovisual media, like radio stations, uh, television companies, the talpas of this world. Yeah, well, well, are you talking? <laughs> no, we're not looking at that yet. No, why are you <laughs> laughing? Not a core business. No, we, we well, that's the question. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. But I think you develop uh, content, and then yeah. you find out, you know, uh, which is the best partner, and, and yeah. to, to which are the most important. Which are the most important partners at this moment for you? Uh, it could be the library, but it could also be uh, Kobo, Storytel, uh, yeah. partners with a wide audience, and 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 who give, uh, who will give us uh, insights. Mm -hmm. That's that's hey the thing. Yeah. And the libraries are, you know, a very important player in this yeah. because they've always been there, and I think we should support it. But it, you know, in digital, in they the digital world, it's it's you know, yeah. it's the same. It's a, exactly the same that you get. Yeah. And they're so competing uh, with commercial parties, which is difficult. Difficult. Yeah. 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 Um, the most important hurdle you would like to remove uh, at this stage of the process, what would that be if you, can t if you could decide that there's one problem you can solve right now, which one would that be? More people to do it. Slash more money? Yeah, no, yeah. The yeah. Same. yeah, that's the same. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, you know, I think, yeah, or remove some of the, the barriers that are just mental, you know. It's like, mm. uh, why are we yeah. not doing this? Yeah. Why do we have to talk about it for half a year before we do it? Why don't we just do it and yeah. see if it works? And then we, we made a lot of mistakes, and we're going to make a lot of mistakes, and it's, it's just the way it is. Yeah. You have to love to make mistakes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I think there's a great, great challenge is ahead. Is that a good wrap-up? Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Um, up to you, yes, I come to you, Martin. I, I just did, sorry. So, um, I, I guess this is a question for Jacob. It, it's a two part question. Um, so, um, I guess the, the first question is do you see a difference in consumption uh, from electronic versus print books in the sense that do people consume different books? And do you foresee a future where you're starting to almost um, request authors to start writing more formulaic type of books, which you see in Netflix, right? So you get a series that works, you get another one roughly the same, and, or maybe a three-part question. Yeah. Um, do, do you then foresee that you've talked about AI to do voice? Mm -hmm. You can also have AI to just start writing stuff. Yep. Do you foresee a future where you can actually combine those? The newspapers, they're already doing it. It's, you know, you have sports results, and then you get an article, you know, it's, you knew who was on the pitch at that time and uh, who scored the goal and uh, when it was done, and then you get an article. And it's, it's already it's happening. It's already there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, about the conceptualizing titles, I think, you know, uh, I think it's a little bit more than it was, but you've all, uh, always had, you know, conceptualized uh, books uh, in romance, uh, in uh, Harlequin books, in uh, crime fiction. But it's, it, it, I think it's, it's easier to get access to the customers now. So it's, it's, uh, uh, if you want to be an author uh, or a producer or what you could call it today, then it's, it's easier to, to reach an audience. And I think a lot more would like to try it out and find out. So we, we see a lot of more content coming out from uh, not uh, literary authors, but authors that are actually just want to tell a story and uh, frame it in a, in a certain way. Yeah. And the licks um, in the books, it's, it's less. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not complicated stories. It's, uh, you, know, you don't have as many persons that you, as you did uh, perhaps in a, in a very well-written uh, literary work, but, but it's, it's easy to understand and uh, you have to be able to listen to it on your way to work. So it's, it's perhaps a little uh, easier to, to go to. Yeah, clear. Good answers to your question, Marta. Yes, okay. 
do you already have some experience in with educational content? Not much. Sorry, it's uh, it's not a part of our business, and uh, I, I know that the two other big publishing houses in Denmark they are looking very much into it, and the government has paid a lot of money to to go into this area, and um, because it's there, and uh, you know, and we need to uh, embrace it in a in a way. You know, a lot of young people they they just. They're asking why it's not in audio. Why can't I get it? You know, you have this textbook, and I don't know how to read it. It's you know, 15 pages for tomorrow, and why shouldn't I just be able to read, uh, uh, hear it instead? Yeah, I come now too. How do you pick the voice if you have a novel to read? Who who decides which voice you pick? Yeah. Sometimes you pick the wrong one, but it's... Uh, <laughs> um, tell it, us, tell us, uh, that's experience. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Then what happens? Yeah, yeah, it's People uh, just stop uh, listening. Uh, yeah, and we can see it. And of course, we get the hard data. When do people uh, drop off? But we also get the reviews in the, yeah, in the services. Exactly. So if somebody is not good at it, you will know it exactly five minutes after you release. Do you, and so it's, uh, it's do you use do you use different voices like uh, the, in the old days we had to how do you say that in the, in English horsepeller horse horsepeller listening we uh, yeah that once uh, oh we we, we sometimes use difficult uh, different voices uh, we do it with nonfiction mm -hmm. we let the uh, the author introduce the story and then a, pr a professional voice do the story yeah. yeah. Um, and we did a, a multicast production with 17 voices, uh, Daisy Jones and the Six, but we'll never do that again. Mm. Because it's, <laughs> it's a hell of a it's job. It's a hell of a job, yeah. and, and uh, people get confused. Ah. The, the, the listeners get confused. It's, it's well done, and it's a very good book, but uh, it's, it's very expensive. And then you even don't have sound effects? Not even sound effects, yeah. no. I heard from a Google Home example that there was a couple of years ago even already that if you, that there was a book and it was connected to your Google Home and it was a children's stories and soundtrack. because of your voice Google Home knew where you were and it delivered the sound effects. So if you were telling and he was walking through the woods and then the Google Home would make the sounds of the, the woods. Wood. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Scary. Yeah, this is, yeah. We're also doing some uh, A/B testing. You know, we uh, we released a this was an uh, you know we didn't ex we didn't want to make an A/B test in this one because we released a book with a very famous um, actor uh, doing the voice, and uh, it got bad reviews. <laughs> Everybody hated it, and then we decided, okay, we make a professional uh, reading uh, instead, and then we we didn't pull the first one back. So we had an A/B yeah. test with these two and. Uh, um, we saw what was what was going on, yeah. and we also done it with a um, with one um, a traditional uh, uh, novel, and then we had a novel where we uh, enriched it with you know uh, uh, voices, extra voices, uh, extra music, uh, footsteps, birds singing, and then we released both of them, and we we could see what were the responses to that. And and which uh, one performed better? Uh, they actually performed exactly the same, you know, uh, when we only got the data, yeah. but uh, the reviews were very differently. Yeah. So uh, the, when people were talking about it, it was, okay, I really like this. Uh, this was a, a new way of, uh, uh, of getting the, the, the novel. But, uh, but if you only looked at the number, it was exactly the same. And that was a little scary to us because uh. then we couldn't have figured anything well, out. How would you do it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we've got all the time of the world. What's the difference between podcast and an audiobook? Can can somebody tell yeah. me, please? Because it's you know it's uh, I think um, it's going to to do like this in the future. It's uh, perhaps we will uh, we'll we're going to see a lot of experience uh, definitely uh, different definitely. It's, but right now, a lot of users in the streaming services they just love a normal story without any noise. So I think we have this audience right now, but you get used to the, you know, the montage and uh, the extra things and you would just prefer to be in this good environment and you have, yeah, I, th I think we will see it merge a lot, a lot more. And is it also that podcast, as if I listen to podcasts, it's most of the time it's like interview kind of stuff and yeah, not like books? It is, but then you have the documentary kind of yeah, podcast also made by the NPO. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, so really you know, well done yeah. with sound effects and, and nice budgets, very subsidized. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, true crime and yeah. you know, yeah. A lot of yeah. Yeah. So it it, it it's, it's yeah touching each other. But yeah. uh, on podcast, you you can't make any money. That's the the main thing. 
yet. Yeah, we have this service uh, you mentioned, Podimo in Denmark, and they they have a subscription now, and and you pay uh, uh, almost uh, 10 euros a month, um, and uh, you know they have I think around 90,000 uh, subscribers now. I think they are in it to be sold, like Mofibo was sold to Storytel, and mm. um, I expect Spotify to be there in a in a couple of minutes. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> it's uh, you know yeah. so I, I don't see the money in in podcast right now, and it's uh, it's a little scary because if you in a in a few years just compare podcast to audiobooks and then where's the we, money? We, yeah, and and that the, I think that is the most scary part of yeah. uh, the whole thing yeah. that we might just be. Uh, a smaller partner in a big Netflix service uh, and, and books then will be, you know, yep. on the lower shelves. Is it uh, content-wise uh, go big or go niche uh, a future also, what you see in other industries also, that, that really the, the blockbusters will, you will earn money, really niche, will, but everything that's in between is difficult or not? Yeah, I think so. And, and But but like the niche... Uh, would also be very difficult for us. We, we're not a niche publisher. Then no. We don't have one theme that we're uh, specializing, so uh, it would, would be difficult to make a business case then. Yeah. And will, for the consumer, will it be one price and then uh, you listen whatever you want, just the way we get used to Netflix and, and platforms like that? Will, be that? will that be the business model for consumers? That is All you can listen, yeah. yeah. But that is already. With that is. That's the only thing that will happen. Yeah. So it's not per book or per track or per whatever. Per minute, yeah. actually. Yeah. Other questions. Have you all Huh? Huh? Ah, you did Somebody else. Yeah. At the end. It's Kobo, right? I have this lovely, lovely question and uh, many opinions in my question. Yeah. But like I said, the value of users being able to sit uh, quiet and shut up in, in a corner and, and read for uh, for an hour or, or longer is part of what ensures uh, our engagement with those users and that snappy TikTok usage um, is what, in essence, I learned from book publishers that we want to prevent. And the question uh, my first question is: How do we prevent to go really that way to, like, be populist publisher to what what the um, what the what the user wants? And from that, a remark on um, uh, what Pete is doing is actually opening the doors to actually use the data that Cobo would be able to provide. Right? In the like two three years ago, we were actually also sharing lots of data uh, with publishers, but they're they were still on a track that they wouldn't be able to adapt to that specific data. And what Pete is doing within his company is actually opening up to do something with it. And I find that interesting from the minute perspective, uh, Pete, like you just said. Because if you look at um, uh, The Crown, which was, which was on Netflix, you have these many shots where the, where the queen is in a train and she goes through Scottish Highlands and for... 45 seconds, you, see, you can, can see this drone view, but is this actually really the creator just sucking out the most minutes out of this user time? Because there's no value to the story, and they're really stretching this thing, and that, that, is, um, some th that is one reason... Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I, I said I was very opinionated. Would you like to sit here, Eric? <laughs> because I'm passionate about the subject. Yeah. Um, but so so we're really competing on those meetings for the users, I'm saying. And that to me justifies the, the way of payment. And now I come to the question, how do you think you I can be more transparent on that model than I am today? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can start on the on the um, you know, I think we found out that a lot of uh, consumers in the streaming services, they like long books. So all our testing with the short books and chapters and uh, uh, you know chopping it up, it hasn't been that successful. Because if you uh, you've decided to uh, be in this environment, that is what books actually can do. You know, you're in this uh, atmosphere. Engaged. You're together with some uh, people uh, for a certain amount of time, or you're together with this idea if it's a non-fiction book, and they like it to be mm. eight, eight hours, ten hours, fifteen hours if it's if it's long. So. I don't see that we all go short. 
uh, I think that is what the books are, are very good at. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not saying that short is the way to go, N not at all, but uh, we see that some kind of books uh, perform better if they're short, some kind of genres, I mean. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why we started up Loft with, with commercial fiction and thrillers. Uh, and that's why we try and explore uh, serializing uh, series, uh, uh, books, but uh, in a test. and, and, and uh, and we're changing, we're changing uh, with the readers and with the data we're getting from, from you guys. And do you get, is there anything you don't get yet that you want from Kobo? Because um, it was this invitation also. Yes, but... <laughs> 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 no, and, and I think the, the cooperation is very good. And, and it's, it's also about reaching uh, certain customers. And we get a lot of feedback on, on which uh, books are doing well and which yeah. genres are they're seeing that, that, that performing. So uh, mm. I'm, I'm satisfied. Really. Okay. Okay, last question for somebody. No? Then a big thank you to you guys. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Piet Varile and Jacob Harden. Thanks.